Okay guys, welcome to another episode of Rotten Reviews. Today I'm going to take a look at uh, 2011's Fright Night, the remake with Colin Farrell. And first, right off the, right off the bat, I want to say that uh, I think that this 72% tomato meter from the critics is despicable. And no surprise there in a lot of, on a lot of movies. Um, but this 59% audience score is also too high. I think that I would judge this at like a 19 to 20% audience score, uh, maybe lower. Uh, it particularly offends me as a fan of the original Fright Night from the 80s. Uh, and we'll get into that. Let's just start off with the original 1985 Fright Night. Um, this movie is like uh, a masterpiece of horror comedy from 1985. It has a 91% tomato meter, not a fresh, go figure, but it's 91%, and a 76% audience score. I think that's fair. Um, I would consider this 80 to 85% on the audience score, but 76 passable. Um, now, I remember when this movie came out, um, I was in high school. Um, you know, this is centered around a kid who's in high school, and uh, to me, this movie was fantastic. I saw it when it uh, it came out on, I believe, HBO or Showtime. It wasn't too far out of the theater. Um, it was fantastic. Everybody I knew at the time, adults and uh, high school kids, loved it. Um, it seems to have certainly stood the test of times, um, at least on Rotten Tomatoes. And, um, you know, particularly Roddy McDowell, his character, the vampire hunter, um, that was just priceless. It was perfect casting. Um, the actor himself that played the uh, protagonist, the high school kid, um, he's completely forgettable as an actor. I don't remember him in other roles other than the sequel to this movie. Um, but yeah, it was just the perfect combination of casting the characters. Uh, the actors did wonderful jobs. The humor all landed. Um, you know, the whole premise of it that a vampire moves in next door and, uh, you know, you've somehow detected him and nobody else, else will listen to you as a high school kid. It was perfect. We hadn't seen it before. Um, the premise was exciting. It seemed completely believable. And uh, the actions of the vampire, this Jerry Dandridge character, it was completely believable. The, um, you know, the way they set him up, the logic behind it, it worked. His actions worked. Um, nothing about it stuck out like a sore thumb um, in contrast to the remake of 2011. Um, but we'll get to that. Um, this was followed by Fright Night 2. Uh, in 1989. Again, I saw this in the theater because I was so impressed with the first one. I actually made a point to see this in the theater. Um, I, I liked it. Uh, everybody else that I knew liked it. Um, now, for some reason, uh, it has a completely opposite score on Rotten Tomatoes. Tomato meter from the critics at 25%. Uh, an audience score, Rotten at 42 I don't know why exactly because I wouldn't consider doing a rotten review on this. Um, my impression of this, as someone who is a fan of the original, was this was a, a, a just fine sequel. Um, it kind of replaced uh, the villain of Jerry Dandridge with his sister, um, but it was kind of um, a remake, uh, a continuation. Um, I don't get why this one suddenly is, um, you know, so rotten compared to the first. I would certainly expect the first one to be just as rotten uh, as the second. Uh, it's a mystery to me, but that's not the point of this video. Uh, I liked this uh, 1989 continuation. Now, when I saw that uh, there was a remake, Fright Night 2011, um, I had high hopes. I saw this on DVD. I was thinking... You know, having not heard anything about it uh, one way or the other, um, I was expecting to be entertained. I wasn't expecting it to hit all the high notes of the original, of course, because I knew it was a remake and I knew Colin Farrell was in it. But this movie completely offended me and disappointed me. I suppose this would be passable in some way if you didn't know anything about the original. But again, why would you call it Fright Night? They tried to capitalize on the original and I consider it offensive because it was so poorly done. Uh, the only positives I see in this 
uh, is the casting of David Tennant as the vampire hunter role um, as a performer in Las Vegas that's dragged into it by the protagonist. I thought I thought that was fantastic. David Tennant was fantastic. He was perfectly cast. Everybody else, I. I found in this 2011 remake was miscast, uh, especially Colin Farrell. His performance as Jerry Dandridge, um, it was complete crap. He wasn't even trying. It wasn't believable at all. The logic behind what he was doing was ridiculous. It was completely offensive to me. So let's get right into the rotten reviews on this. Um, Four stars, trimming the fat off the original, Fright Night fully entertains, combining camp horror cliché, Hitchcockian voyeurism, and teenage frustrations into an exciting or exacting comedy horror thriller that is wholly satisfying in its brevity and fun. Now, right off the bat, I completely disagree with this. Um, I'd say that Fright Night 2011 deserves to be a one and a half star maximum. Uh, I'm leaning more towards one star. Um, they're saying here in this review that it's trimming the fat off the original. Actually, it's trimming all the meat off the original and leaving nothing but the grisly, nasty fat, if you want to make that meat type comparison. Um, and the rest of their description is basically describing what I feel about the first one. Um, this one is a complete abomination, so I disagree. Uh, five stars, an excellent remake. Um, what, you work for marketing? Uh, for this film. I don't get it. This is 2019, so I don't know why someone would need to um, go over the top like that now. Eight years after the fact. Uh, wow. That's all I can say. Four stars. A good remake horror film since Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to be sarcastic there because I didn't consider the remake of Dawn of the Dead to be memorable in any way. So let's move on. Three stars. Okay remake of the 1985 horror flick of the same name is aimed more for laughs than scares. Farrell does a nice job playing the vampire. Farrell does a crap job playing the vampire. Um, there's nothing about him that's believable. Uh, he just comes across as an asshole. He's just playing an asshole next door neighbor. It's completely pathetic. Um, he was miscast 100% as well as not giving a shit. Uh, four and a half stars. Very underrated vampire flick. As someone who isn't generally bowled over by the vampire genre or vampire mythology, this one is very fun, with strong moments of suspension, tension, and humor, and fine performances by the cast, including the late Anton Yelkton. Not sure why this film has been received so poorly by audiences. Well, I'm not so, so sure on why it's not even lower than that it score. I'm, why did it get a 59%? It deserves like a 20%. Um, Anton Yelkton is miscast. He doesn't come across to me believable as this high school kid in any way. Um, I don't see how he adds anything to this. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. I'm just saying he doesn't belong in this. He just rubs me the wrong way right off the bat. There's nothing innocent and humorous about him. There's nothing naive about him and that's what you had in the original. Um, He's like doing things that don't make sense for a high school kid. Um, it's more like a college age kid playing a high school kid. That's how it strikes me. I don't get it at all. Um, again, I say everybody is miscast in this except for David Tennant who is cast perfectly. Um, five stars. This movie is so good, even better the second time. You're high, I guess, after two or three joints. Uh, two stars. This is a remake of the older 80s film and should stand as proof that no matter what star cast you have and how technology has developed so much to aid the filmmaker, it is always a wise decision to never tinker with the original. If for no other reason than basic psychology says that people will always, no matter what, compare the film to the original and chances are high they will always prefer the original. This Fright Night, the remake, seems like a lazy cash grab with the 3D acting as grotesque. I, I completely agree. However, this reviewers, um, they're going into saying that this is a crap film, yet right off the bat I was thinking they're going to give it high praise because they're making excuses. They're saying uh, we should expect something different than the original called Fright Night. Um, if that were the case, why did the studio name this Fright Night? 
this makes no sense. This is not an excuse. You're saying, okay, well, they remade Fright Night and they call it Fright Night. Um, so it's just basic psychology that people won't like it because it's not going to live up to that. Well, then why did they call it Fright Night? Why is this an excuse? This is complete nonsense. I agree. I don't agree two stars. I think one and a half. But making an excuse that like people just won't accept any kind of remake, um, no. Bull, bull crap. Um, this is a complete cop-out. I don't buy it for a second. They wanted to capitalize on Fright Night. It's a cash grab. It's not even a half-ass attempt at a cash grab, and it's it's offensive. It, this actually offends me, and I'll state that up front. I already did, I believe. Three and a half stars. I'm normally not a fan of vampire movies, but this one was really good. Having Anton Yelkin and the beautiful Imogen Potts supported by Colin Farrell and Tony Collette was a great casting decision. I completely disagree. They listed everybody that was completely miscast. Miscast. Complete nonsense. They worked really well together and were a treat to watch. No, they didn't work well together. They clashed with each other. They... Anyway, let's move on. Um, the story was initially very cliché, but they quickly set aside the popular tropes and went with fresh ideas. Really? Okay, here's a fresh idea for you. Instead of having Derry, uh, Jerry Dandridge's character nonchalantly blow off the fact that a teenager next door is accusing him of being a vampire, um, in the original that's what he did because that's what you would do. That makes logical sense. Um, obviously your mom's not going to believe you as a high school kid when you tell her that the guy next door is a vampire. So why would the guy next door be worried in the slightest that he's being accused of it? In fact, wouldn't he make a joke of it? And that's what the first one does. In this one, when the next door neighbor vampire gets word that um, he's being accused of being a vampire by the kid next door, what does he do? He threatens the kid next door. This makes no sense. I mean, yeah, it makes sense for him to admit he's a vampire, but why would it be threatening? Why would you need to threaten him? The proper logical thing would be for the vampire next door to say, yeah, I'm a vampire and you can't do anything about it, so let's just be friends. And that's kind of what the first one tried to do, and that's what makes sense. But this one, Colin Farrell comes over and tries to get himself invited in, of course, um, the teenage kid next door won't invite him in, and then he gets upset and actually threatens to kill him. Like, this makes no sense. Um, nobody's going to believe him anyway, so why make it easier for him to convince people of this? This doesn't make any sense. That's when it completely blew me away as being ridiculous. The miscasting rubbed me wrong right from the beginning. But Colin Farrell coming over and, you know, needing a six-pack or whatever, or bringing a six-pack or whatever the way it was, it was so pathetic and bad. Um, two and a half stars. There are so many things within this movie that stretch credibility or make no sense. Why does nobody leave their house after hearing an exploding building? Yeah. Uh, why does it take so long for a tenant's character to suss security is gone? Yeah. Um, who in the hell would think it was a good idea to have sex on the floor in the middle of an apartment building with people are entering and leaving from? Interruptions? You can forget simple logic with this movie. Sure, it does a couple of things like blowing up. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't even have to get to the parts with David Tennant to understand that there's plot holes. Right, the, the basic premise that this vampire is coming over to threaten the kid next door. Right from the get-go, this thing is dead. This, that's the biggest plot hole at all. That was a major feature of the original film. That's why it was so charming and unique. The guy admits what he is. You can't convince your mom. And he's just like, hey, can't we just work together? That makes sense. That's what works. But nope, they didn't even try that. They tried all this nonsensical stuff. It's like the people that made this remake called it Fright Night didn't even watch the original didn't even understand why the original was popular. It's completely offensive. Uh, half a star. Was so shitty, I went through every haunted house and I wasn't scared once, and I am the most easily scared person. I am so disappointed and I will never be attending to another Fright Night again. Um, I don't understand exactly what they're saying. They're saying they were expected to be scared and they weren't scared. But see, the original movie, um, it wasn't trying to scare you. It was kind of more a horror comedy. Um, I wasn't scared. I was, um, you know, a, a 15, 16 year old when I saw the original Fright Night. Um, it didn't scare me. It had tension, but I wasn't scared in the horror sense because it wasn't trying to do that. Now, if this movie was trying to do that, it also utterly failed on that level. 
Um, so it's another fail. Uh, five stars. Wow, this was sensational. I loved every part of it that it'll take too long to explain. It's amazing. You should go see it right now. It's one of the best or maybe the best vampire movies in decades. Wow, this guy's higher than crap. Um, four stars. Featuring charismatic performances from Karen F Colin Farrell and David Tennant. No, I can take that as, um, you know, sarcasm. David Tennant's almost good in everything he does. Um, he's cast perfectly as a vampire hunter in this, but he's underused, sorely underused, brought into the story way too late. If he had been brought in much earlier, it would have been so much better. But no, no. Um, he's like the shining gem of this movie that's just barely um, utilized, unfortunately. Um, three and a half stars. The good type of over-the-top performance from both David Tennant and Colin Farrell creates an entertaining vampire movie. No, David Tennant was over-the-top, and it works. Uh, Colin Farrell, um, he just plays an asshole living next door that happens to be a vampire. A um, hundred other actors could have done better in their sleep. It was just a bad mistake having him do this, and it kind of brings back um, the remake of Total Recall. This is the wrong guy to be bringing back. You know, for some reason at this time period, 2011, 2012, um, people thought he was going to be the, you know, guy to bring in and replace Arnold Schwarzenegger or replace, um, you know, any other uh, character that was a hit in the 80s. No, I don't know where they got this idea. Uh, Colin Farrell's good in a particular set of things. Um, that he can just replace movie, uh, replace people in 1980s action movies. This is ridiculous. Um, four stars, fun, bloody, good acting, and a wild, enjoyable plot that had me on the edge of my seat. That's got to be sarcasm, please. Three stars, it's good movie to watch. Mm, no. Three and a half stars, a blast of a film that is below the level of a great film, but above most of those remakes. I don't get it, people. I don't get it. Two and a half stars. I may be in the minority in this, but I wasn't big into this. It's not that it was bad because it wasn't. I just wasn't feeling it. Anton Yelkton was fine. Johnny Depp was decent. Some say he stole every scene. I thought he was just all right. I felt like this movie you should not take serious, but it wants you to. Um, wow, I'm not going to continue with this. Johnny Depp, really? You know, Johnny Depp might have played the vampire a lot more cornier, and it might have been funny, at least, but this wasn't. Uh, three stars, Fright Night. This mildly entertaining remake of the 1985 original isn't without its clever moments or charm, helped by solid performances. No, I'm not even going to continue. It's not a C+. Um, you know, again, there's some nonsensical stuff, like there's a kind of a uh, part of it where, you know, we're doing things with the lawn sprinklers and etc. There's another whole bunch of wasted footage where the family's fleeing in a minivan down the highway only to return later because of some supernatural, um, you know, uh, attack that uh, Colin Farrell's character does from a distance and they return back to the house. <sighs> Complete nonsense. There's a lot of just scenes that are waste. They're just a wasteland of nonsense. Um, Three stars. To childishly believe that your neighbor is actually a baleful fiend with a dark secret is something I figure almost every child experiences in their lifetime, so it's a shame that the brooding muscle man that moves in next door, a terrific Colin Farrell, to teenager Charlie Brewster Anton Yelkin is not just a baleful fiend, but also a lusty, bloodthirsty vampire. It takes only a few days for Charlie to come to that conclusion, and it takes only a few days for Charlie to decide that, some, you know, it takes only too much time in the movie for anything interesting to happen. Um, since you're calling it Fright Night and we've already seen the original, we already know the basic premise of what should happen, yet you don't give us anything new, you just give us like the same stuff but done in a really bad way. It's completely offensive. I'm not even going to finish that review. Um, three stars. I looked at my watch a lot equals six out of ten. Uh, no, I looked at my watch a lot equals like two out of ten. Uh, four stars. A pretty great remake thanks to the handling of the material and great cast. Gives bite to vampire genre again, which is needed these days. No, also enjoy that is not a shot-for-shot shot remake. The only quarrel I have with the movie is the terrible CGI. Oh, wow, you're very forgiving. I didn't even notice any CGI. 
Uh, I thought the terrible performances and the terrible writing were enough. Um, four and a half stars, an underrated remake that actually suppresses the original. Three and a half stars, not as good as the original, but still entertaining. It's at times very violent, but then it is a vampire movie, so I guess that should be expected. Very violent. Uh, it's very forgettably violent then, but you know, the original wasn't violent. It was more of a psychological thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know where to go with some of these reviews. It's almost like I'm wondering if because um, maybe Anton Yelkin uh, passed away in a tragic way that they're not um, trying to upvote everything he was in because flat out this was just one of the worst things he was in. Uh, he was miscast. Um, it was pointless. Three and a half stars. Although Fright Night is one of the better remakes, no... However, just like the other ones, an unnecessary remake. Uh, I'll agree it was unnecessary, but this was not a better remake. Um, unless you're comparing it to like Total Recall. Yeah, okay, maybe it was less um, dumb than Total Recall. Because Total Recall, um, since it had better, more popular stars in it that have done fantastic and other things, uh, you can like make more fun of it that they were completely miscast. Uh, again, everybody was miscast in this one, but these aren't stars of the same caliber that were in Total Recall. Colin Farrell's the same, of course. Um, so you can forgive this one a little. But no, this is another bad one, another bad remake. Five stars. The remake was wonderful, a very good story, excellent retold vampire story. It was wonderful in 3D. Wow, really? I didn't even know it was in 3D. Um, I don't even know what to say about that. Uh, four stars. This is a great movie. It's a remake to the 1985 original, and while it is a bit of an unnecessary remake, I welcome its existence upon a few great remakes. The movie has a great tone and feel to it, and completely disagree. As great as, as well as a great setting of being in a set, a set in a small town. There was no small town. This was basically just like a housing subdivision that could have been outside anywhere in Las Vegas and or Phoenix, and um, it was like half full of foreclosed properties at some point recently. Um, there's no town here. It's just a nondescript uh, housing tract out in the middle of the desert. Uh, what town? See, that's another thing. The original, you actually had a town and things going on in the town. Um, there's no town in this one. Uh, two and a half stars. Doesn't really add anything to the original, but I've seen far worse horror remakes. Yeah, there's far worse. Um, they're less than a star, but this is still a star. Uh, four stars. Fright Night may not have the most scares ever seen in a horror film. There are no scares, flat out. Uh, but it features an incredible performance by Colin Farrell, and that's close enough for me. Uh, the dude was so intimidating and in your face, it was really unforgettable. Really? He was just the asshole next door. Um, my reaction, even as a high school kid with him standing at the door, would have just been, uh, yeah, I can call the cops, get lost. He wasn't intimidating. Uh, two stars. Hollywood killed one of my childhood favorite horror films, Frown Emoticon. I held off on checking out this remake because nobody wanted to go see it with me five years ago. What a horrible selection of actors to replace the original characters. Replacing Evil Ed with the dork from Superbad and turning Peter Vincent into some young, drunk, egotistical playboy. Not even Colin Farrell was good as Jerry. He tried too hard to copy the original character's suaveness and made himself look like an idiot. I don't think he was trying to copy anything. I think he was just playing like an asshole next door. But yeah, he looked like an idiot. Two and a half stars. A completely unnecessary, dumbed down, and poorly modernized version of the superior 1985 flick. The result is the most average thing imaginable. No, I disagree. It's not even average. Uh, one star. Three stars, not bad for a remake. Three stars, there's nothing special about Friday Night. Three stars, three and a half stars, horror movie with tongue-in-cheek humor. Five stars, Anton is earnest and fun. David Tennant is a delightful rake. Farrell is the sexiest predator ever with a perfect control over his features, voice, and body language of a great hunting creature. A hugely fun, popular movie. Uh, I don't know what they're seeing here. Are these just fanboys of Colin Farrell? or something, or is there some subtext um, cult-like thing going on here that I don't see? Because this is a complete fail. Um, 
one and a half stars, really nothing going on here, yeah. Two and a half stars, personally I think vampires are outdated, yeah, but that's another argument. Uh, four stars, a new neighbor moves next door to a high school boy and a single mother. Quickly we learn that he is a vampire looking forward to colonizing and procreating. My expectations were low going in, but I found myself pleasantly surprised. No, it's like you don't even know why they called it Fright Night. You obviously didn't see the original. Half a star. I think Colin Farrell is one of those actors like Brad Pitt, who reviewers really like, regardless of whether the film he's in is a hunk of dog shit. This film is a perfect example of a hunk of dog shit, that is. I agree 100%. Um, I'm not sure that reviewers particularly like Colin Farrell. Um, I just think, like I said before, he works very well in certain niche things. But as a general star that you can just put into action movies and whatnot, no, he doesn't work. Three and a half stars. An overall average film with fairly decent performances from Anton Yelkin and Imogen Poots. What really sold this film for me was the incredibly unnerving next door neighbor Jerry. Farrell gives a good performance and may have creeped out many. Finally, Tennant's performance as Peter Vincent added a bit more depth and a lot more comedy. Okay, Tennant was great. He was cast perfectly. Um brought in too late, had too small of a role. Uh, but this stuff about, you know, Farrell gives a good performance and they're so creeped out by him or intimidated, I don't see it. I don't get it. Um, again, it's like they never saw the original. Um, you know, Colin Cross is too close to comedy for me, but it fails on that. Uh, two and a half stars. For me, it was just okay. Some parts of it I liked. However, the older version was my favorite of all. Rodney McDowell was brilliant. I don't care for Colin as a vampire. I agree. Um, again, one star. Three and a half stars. I really liked it. And anyone who knows me also knows that I hate horror. When I saw the reviews, I thought, wait, this sounds like something I might like. It's more of a thriller than horror. And I like the whole teen high school aspect. The writing and story are what make it. No, watch the original. You don't know what you're missing. It's like you never even saw it. Um, three and a half stars. A good version of the 80s original. No, you never saw it. Three stars. This is what a reimagining looks like. Take a story and spin it into something new. Though I prefer the original, this one ain't too bad. It's funny, action-packed. No, it's not funny. It's not action-packed. It's not. It's logically ridiculous. Um, it's nothing. But yeah, it's more of a reimagining because it's just so off-putting from the original. Uh, four stars. Good remake. I enjoyed it as much as I did with the original. Uh, wow, I don't know what original you mean. Four stars. Totally enjoyed this movie. I was surprised that it managed to create some creepiness. Uh, no, it just created disappointment. One and a half stars. The problem with this movie is the setting makes it very difficult to pull off this plot, almost too difficult to the point of cheesy and cliche. They should have set it in a northern U.S. country town where the houses are more spread out. The creepiness of the forest would have played more to the tune of this movie. It's Jennifer's body all over again. The only redeeming quality I could find to it was McLovin's character. Yeah, you know, again, they do make a point. It's set in like a housing tract outside Vegas, I believe but it could have been in Arizona either way. Um, they all look the same. They all, at this time period, were full of foreclosures. Um, it doesn't work, you're right. Um, it doesn't give you the sense of a small town. Um, it's like they wanted to put it out there to say that, you know, that's why the police don't show up when stuff's blowing up. But it just doesn't work at all. It just makes it feel cheap. Um, it makes it feel like they shot it in such a place because it's such a cheap way to do it. It has no feel to it. It has no atmosphere. It's just um, boring. Um, three stars. A fair update to the original movie, helped certainly by the use of better looking effects. Again, I don't remember any effects with this one either. Um, I know the first one, it had practical effects. This one probably has CGI. I'm not sure. I can't remember where it had CGI. I haven't seen this in over a year. We're into reviews of 2015 now. Four and a half stars, one of the best remakes there is. Three stars, I haven't seen the start of this film yet. <laughs> Three stars, not very original and a little predictable, but well acted, thrilling, emotional, interesting with some humor. It's like you know, you want to be a part of the marketing team for this film, but you're years too late. Uh, three stars, not very original and a little predictable, but well acted, no wrong. Three and a half stars, I love Carl Colin Farrell. Well, you're just one of his fanboys or fangirls. Uh, three and a half stars, totally awesome, bloody, 
funny and stylish. No, it wasn't. It was totally boring. Uh, three and a half stars. This was an okay movie for a remake. It didn't capture the feel of the superior original, but was created with a slicker, bigger budget that actually hurt it when comparing to the original. Several new characters are added, and attitudes of recreated characters are updated for the times. Also, Charlie's mom plays a bigger role, and also look for Chris Sarandon to make a cameo. Yeah, um, no, I disagree. Um, it's updated into boredom. Uh, three and a half stars. Really stylish from start to finish. No, it's not. Where do they get the stylish? Um, is a half foreclosed um, Las Vegas um, edge of the desert housing complex uh, stylish and edgy? No, it's not. It's completely boring. Um, four stars. David Tennant made this film for me. Well, David Tennant can make a film for anybody. Um, he's good at what he does. But no, it's not enough to save this. Three stars. Um, this remake kept me interested until the end. Colin Farrell finally gave us a modern vampire that is dark and dangerous. Uh, wrong. He's not a vampire. He's simply like an asshole neighbor who's a psycho. Um, vampire, no, it's a fail. I'm going to leave this one. It's, it's disgusting me that I'm just running into five-star reviews. I don't get it. I never will. Uh, obviously, there's bad reviews in here. We have a 59% audience score. Why this is fresh, I don't know. This deserves to be a 19 percenter. Um, and um, all I can do is bag on it. All I'm going to do is sit here and just bag on it and bag on it. And that's what it deserves. I've made my point. Um, Fright Night 2011 deserves to disappear. Um, I'm going to call it on this one, and I'm going to see you on the next Rotten Reviews.